heard this phrase one time and I really, really liked it. It stuck in my head. Programmers are two types, those who understand pointers and those who don't. So don't be one of those who don't understand uh, pointers. Um, pointers basically makes C++ very, very special. I think one of the points why pointers, uh, why C++ is still alive is because of pointers. So um, you need to pay a very, very close attention to what I'm going to say today. And hopefully you will be able to get the idea of pointers. And I will tell you something when I was a student. I really didn't like pointers because I couldn't understand what it is. I remember we were like in a class where we have 120 students and it was really, really hard to understand what the, what the instructor was talking about. So let's hope this is not the case this time. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what is a pointer? Well, to understand pointers, we need to go back to ask ourselves this question, what is a variable? And in C++, if you want to create a variable, what do you do? You basically define the data type, decide what's going to be the data type. For example, I will go with an integer. And then I'll give it a name, for example, x. And this is you declaring a pointer, uh, sorry, declaring a variable of a type integer. Now, what's going to happen inside the memory after that is that there will be a space inside the memory is going to be reserved and that space we are going to call it x and then if I come here and say x equals 5 that basically means in this space here we will have a value 5 stored there now in reality C++ uh, the, the processor communicate with the main memory but they don't actually use x's or whatever the variable name that you give it basically the processor communicate with the memory based on something we call memory addresses. So every single memory location inside your memory system has what we call an address. So this one has an address, this one has an address, this one has an address, this one has an address. Every single memory location has an address. And every time you process or need information from the memory, the process is going to communicate with the memory based on that address. Now, do I have to memorize those addresses? No, the addresses are going to be very, very long. You can have a lot of them. But what you need to know, the operating system will take care of all these details and all these uh, numbers. And what do you need to know? And this is, uh, again, very important. If this address, for example, was 7, then this address is going to be 8, and then this address is going to be 9. So you can see the addresses are organized in a sequential form. So this is, again, tradition variables. Whenever you create a variable, you declare the data type. A reserved space inside the memory will be held to store the value you're going to store in that variable. We, as a programmer, who are going to use the program. We're going to call it by x. But deep down inside the system, what's going on behind the scene that you don't know, everything is done using addresses. Okay, what does that have to do with pointers? Well, let's go back, and I'm going to try to make it a little bit better. So imagine this. I created this integer variable, and I will assign 5 to it. Now, inside the memory... There is a space, and this space we call it x, but in reality it has an address. We'll call this address, for example, a3b. By the way, address and use, uh, address, addresses in the memory are uh, use the hexadecimal numbering system, so we do have a and b and 3 and if you don't pick a decimal numbering system, that will make it easy for you. If you don't understand what picks a decimal numbering system, then don't worry about that, at least for now. So this is the address. Now, a pointer, in the other hand, and again, the definition will not make that much of sense to you at the beginning, but when we're going to see the application, you'll start understanding why is it important. A pointer basically is a space inside the memory. And in this space, we are only allowed, and this is very important to understand, to store addresses of other memory locations. So what does that mean? That basically means in this area here, I can actually store the value A, 3, B. And that's what's a pointer. Now let's talk about the definition again. A pointer is 
a space. Oops, it's a variable after all at the beginning. But in this variable, we can only store addresses of other memory locations. So the address of the memory location that store the value 5, I can store it in a pointer. How do I do that? I will show you, of course, later. But uh, yeah, let's just show you how, and then I'll tell you why would I want to do that. So to get something like what I draw here to work, you need to create a pointer. Now, what is the syntax of a pointer? Well, it's very, very similar to the syntax of a variable. The only difference here between them is you have three options. You can put an asterisk in this area closer to the point, to the integer definition. You can put it closer to the variable, or you can put it in the middle. Those are the two options again. You can put it, let's just go ahead and do it again. Integer PT, and you can put it in this area. You may ask us what's the difference. I'm going to explain that in a sec. So after you create those pointers, what you can do, you can store the value, the address of x, which is a, 3, B, inside this pointer, and we do that using the following syntax. You put the and percent, and you put x here. So my colon. Here we go. This is again just a different uh, what do I and here we go. X. So what, what is this and percent operation? Well, this basically means take the address of the memory location of the variable x and store it inside this pointer. This is exactly the same thing here. Now, you may ask a question, why can I just go ahead and type integer pt equal a 3b? For two reasons. Number one, you don't know what is the absolute of a. You don't have it. You cannot guess it. And second of all, Compiler will never allow you to do that because if you have the freedom to choose any uh, address inside your memory, you may end up using addresses of other uh, other programs that are running in the background that you don't see. And if you try to change the values for those programs, you may lead to the whole system to crash down. So basically, the operating system will tell you, you know what, I have full control over those memory location and their addresses. You are not allowed to directly manipulate them. Okay, so this is not allowed. You can only assign the address to uh, the, a pointer to an actual variable that you created. Now, the question is, what is the point of all of this? The idea here is, if you have a pointer that points to another variable, you can manipulate that variable without the need to have access to that variable. Again, this is a lot to take. I don't, I don't blame you for that. But let's just go ahead and explain what I just said. When you create a variable and you create a pointer that will point to that variable, you can manipulate that variable without even the need to touch that variable. So what does that mean? For example, I do have now x that equal 5. I know that. Now, what if I want to change x without touching x? That's what I'm trying to say here. To do that, all you have to do, you type the asterisk. You type the name of the variable, uh, the pointer, and you come here and change it to 100. So what does this line would do? This line basically means go to the PT, which is this one, and when you put the asterisk here, means use the address and go to that memory location. So you're basically going to be moving to this memory location. And then after that, assign 100 here. So I was able to process, manipulate, update X without touching X. And this is the whole point of a pointer. And now you may ask the question, OK, why don't you just just do this? Where, where's my pointer? I can't see it. Here it is. Why don't you just type X equal 100? Well. Sometimes you don't have access to x. We talked about the scope of the variables. We said the variable sometimes is available in one part of your program and is not available in other part of the program. So basically, you don't have access to x anytime. But if you have access to the pointer, then you have no problems. You can change it anywhere you want. That's give you some freedom here. Also, there's a lot of application data structures are basically built based on pointers. Why? Because pointers help you to manage your memory in 
the best efficient way. And when I say best efficient way, you're saving some space, and most importantly, your program is going to execute way more faster. So this is, again, just an explanation about pointers. Um, one last thing I need, to, I need to tell you here is when you want to create a pointer that will point to an integer, it has to be declared as, a, as an integer. You see here this integer and this integer. You cannot have a pointer that is a double to point to an integer. So basically, the pointer and the variable you're going to be pointing at should be the same data type. Again, at this point, you will not know what is the reason why for creating pointers. I'm going to explain a lot of applications in a sec so you'll understand better what is the point of a pointer. So let's go ahead and go back to uh, Visual Studio and try to demonstrate what I just said here. So here we go. This is my program. I'm going to create an integer. I'm going to call it x. x is going to equal 5. Now I'm going to create another a pointer and I'm going to put, uh, where is it, where is it? Here it is. pt equal the address of x. Now look what I'm going to do. I'm going to say c out pt just to see what is the value that just happened here. Okay, C out PT, and I'm going to put a space, and then I'm going to put um, the asterisk of PT in line. I'm just going to run this to show you that what I'm going to get. So here we go. This is the value that. Uh, the stored inside x, I'm using the pt to have access to x, so I can see the value of 5. This is actually the address or the variable x. Now, every time you run the program, you will notice that you will get a different value for the address, because every time you run a program, the compiler will look for a different address for it. And here it is. You can see that they're different. Okay, now with that being said, let's go back here and try to change uh, x without touching x. So I'm going to put pt equal 100. So I updated it, and I'm going to say, now show me x, end line. Remember here, if you look, I only assigned 5 to x one time, and I didn't touch x after that. All I'm doing here, I'm working with a pointer. But now I'm showing, telling show me x after this. Well, you know what? Let me show you before and after, so you'll have an, an, an idea. And I'm just going to put before. And I'll put after here. Okay. And let's run it. Okay. And here we go. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. Before X and after X. And let me put a space here. So go back here. And here we go. Before it was 5, after it was 100. And you can see here, I did what I did without touching x. That's the whole point of a pointer, being able to manipulate a variable without the need to have access to the variable directly. Where do I going to use pointers? There's a lot of applications. I'm going to go through them one by one. Now, one thing you should know about pointers, too. Uh, let me just come here and change this and put it like this. Now, I will get exactly the same results, as you can see here. So, the question is, what's the difference between having the asterisk closer to the integer or closer to the variable? Well, I'll show you that, and I'm going to comment. So, let's take this statement up for as, as an example. Integer a, and then b, and then c. Now, as you can see here, i got three integers. The question is... What if I put the asterisk here? Well, let me just tell you what's going to happen. Basically, A is going to be defined as a pointer, and B and C are going to be defined as regular integers. So the question is, what if I do the opposite? What if I put it this way? Well, here's the thing. Exactly the same results. So if you put it uh, before or after uh, next to the character or the uh, variable or uh, closer to the uh, the declaration of the data type, it's not going to change anything. But what's going to change, basically, you should understand that this here is going to be a pointer and everything else is going to be uh, a regular integer. Well, the question is, what if I put it this way? 
Well, if that's the case, then C is going to be a pointer and the rest are going to be irregular variables. Um, what if I put it this way? Same thing. Now, why am I saying this? Well, basically because I've, I've seen it before. I've seen some some references, and I think this is because the old style of C++. In the old style of C++, when you put it this way, that basically means A and B and C are going to be considered as all pointers. And then if you put it this way, it's just basically A. Now, again, that's old style. But I, I believe it doesn't matter if you put it next or close. The only one that you see with an asterisk is going to be treated as uh, the pointer. Okay, so let me take this away and let's get back to the pointers. So we talked about pointers. We understand what are pointers. Now, it's, I believe it's time to ask ourselves, um, what is the use of a pointer? Well, there's a lot of usages for pointers. Um, the first one, as I told you, I just showed you here before, that I was able to manipulate X without touching X. But we can actually pass pointers to uh, as, a, as, as an argument. So if I come here and say void, test and I'm going to put an integer here and I'm going to put a pointer let's call it PTR and in this area I'm just going to change whatever the value of PTR is equal 100 that's all I'm going to do so well you know let's change it to be 500 a little bit change so here we go this let's call it test one so as you can see here I passed um, um, I have an argument here, uh, sorry, a parameter as a pointer. Now what I can do, instead of actually doing it this way, let's just call that function test1. Test1, and I'll pass pt. Okay, so I'm passing actually the address here. Address of who? Address of x. So I'm going to be able to manipulate x here, and I'll give the same exact results. And wait for it. It's taking way too long. Okay, here we go. You can see the results. So again, this is one way to do the job, or look what I can do. I, If I don't want to pass the pointer itself, I can pass the address of x and receive it as an address here, and I'll give the same result. And here we go. So again, this is one of the uses of the pointer, of course. Now, let's, again, you may think this is, what is the whole point of this there? I can use references, and actually this is why Java um, Java came up with this. So I'll just use the references and, and, and get it over with. Well, that's again one of the uses of pointers. You can pass them to part, uh, as an argument and receive them as a parameter here and manipulate them. So it's going to give you the same results as references. Well, is that all? Well, not, not exactly. I'll give you an example here. Um, we have something called embedded systems. And embedded systems, if you want to think about the simplest embedded system that you're using in your data life, is that watch, for example, Apple Watch, or, or um, any of those embedded devices that you use in your daily life. Now, those small devices, they have limitation. Actually, not one limitation, limitations. And the limitations that we have, they're not as strong as a regular desktop or computer. And most importantly, they are limited with the number or sorry, the size of the RAM that they can have. So the size of the RAM in that Apple Watch, for example, is not going to be as big as your desktop or your laptop. So obviously we have a problem here, which is basically the uh, size of the memory that we have. So if you are limited with the size of the memory, that basically means you're going to be limited with the size of the program you're going to create. And if I want to put in a different word, it's going to be you're going to be limited with the uh, with the uh, available space that you can reserve for your program and for your variables. So what I can do, I can come here and do this. I'm going to create what we call a dynamic variable. Now this here is a static variable. Static variable basically means um, let me just go to new space 
can do that. A dynamic variable, basically, it's a variable that's going to be created and destroyed while the program is executed. Static variables, basically, it's created, the, the, the variables reserved space inside the memory at the compilation time, and then whenever you get to the end of it, you are going to erase it. The operator is going to erase it. But what we're going to do, we're going to create a different type of variables. And this type of variables is, uh, is what we call dynamic variables. And this dynamic variables, basically, well, there will be a space, a, a limited space reserved for them. And you can delete them free the space for the memory system and create new ones as much as you want during the execution of the program. So let me just show you how does it work. I can come here and create an integer and again it's going to be a pointer. I'm going to call it dval. And then this is very important. You type uh, equal new integer and put some equal in here. This is here what we call a dynamic variable. Now there will be a space inside the memory reserved uh, for the, just like any pointer. And if I want to keep, if I want to explain how does it work, uh, let me just keep going and I'll explain it later. I could come here and say, well, dval equal 100. And I can treat it just like any variable, but just remember you always have to have that asterisk at the um, at the beginning of it. So if I want to go C out, dval, and line, and that will work perfectly fine. Now, the part that everybody forget, which basically is the whole point of those dynamic variables, is that by the time you're done with the variable, you have to manually delete it, dval. Again, this line, a lot of people forget about it. This is basically how you're going to be judged. Do you forget about it? Because the whole point of the dynamic variable is this part. The part that, in the middle of the program, I can create a variable, reserve a space for it inside the memory, and then delete it if I don't want to use it anymore. And that space could be used for another variable. And why am I doing this? Because when you have a limited size of a program, you don't, you're not as free as when you create a variable program using your computer. You are really limited with the number of variables that you can create. So dynamic variable is a solution for that and it's built based on using of, uh, pointers. Let's just give this a try. Um, okay, I just 100, so I'll, the last value should be printed is 100. Oh, actually I forgot. It's the address, that's what's printed. I need to put the asterisk here so I can see the value. And here we go. So um, pointers basically will make your program more efficient. Pointers um, are a big deal in C++. And pointers is one of the reasons why C++ is still alive, because a lot of other programming, I can tell most of the other programs, they don't actually do have pointers. It gives you more uh, control over your program. It makes you a good memory manager for your programmer, all these kind of details. So let me just go and show you how does this part of the code work. Let me just copy it, and I'm going to store it in this area. So this is way too small. Uh-oh. My program is acting weird. There are no responding. Okay. Let's just take that out. Let me copy this. Let me increase the phone size, actually. Okay. Sorry that took that long. Um, let me just explain what's going on inside the memory. Well, when the first statement here, let me just point to it. My bad. Let's go back here, click here. Okay, now I can work. When this statement is executed, what can happen basically inside the memory, you'll have there's a place called the heap, and the heap basically is going to reserve a space for the dval 
and the dval will hold a pointer and the pointer sorry an address and that address is going to be pointing to another memory location and that memory location in this case doesn't have an actually variable name so it's just going to hold the value that you decided in this line and now just like any pointers when you want to have a an access to the variable value, you go to the variable pointer, you read the address here, you use the address to find out the minimum location of that address, and then you get the value, and then you print it on the screen. Most importantly, you need to delete that variable. Deleting this variable basically will aid to delete this part and this part, so you will have the space back, so you can use it by creating a new variable in your program. Now, is that it is that everything we know about uh, uh, about pointers? No, actually, there is one last application which is very, very important. It's even more important than whatever I just said right now. Is creating what we call dynamic arrays. Now, we learned about static arrays. Let's see what is a dynamic array. Oh, before we do dynamic arrays, let me just show you something very, very important: the relationship between arrays and pointers. Let's create an array, integer ARR, let's put the value of 5, and let's set those values, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Put some call here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to type AAR on the screen. Now, what I want you to pay attention here, I didn't type AAR of 0, or 1, or 2. No, I just typed what is AAR by itself. Now, I'm going to run it. And I want you to, to have a look at what AAR is and try to guess what it is. Here's AAR. Now, what is that telling you? Well, let's just compare it to this part here. Remember this part? This is where we printed the PT. So look at the AR and look at this PT. PT was a pointer, and we point in, in, in a pointer we store an address. And this is AR. They both look like they're both addresses. And if that's the conclusion that you came up with, then you are right. Here's what you should know. When you declare an array, you're basically declaring or defining a pointer. Now, that may sound really weird. Let's go ahead here to explain what it is. So, I typed integer. Oops. No, 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 no. Let's start fresh. Do not save. Okay. Let's do it here. Integer x of 5. Oh, x of 5, not x. And then you assign the values. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, what's going to happen inside the computer? Basically, and we said that before, the compiler or the brain system will look for five spaces next to each other. Now, one thing you should know, each one of those spaces by itself is not a single memory location. It depends on the data type that you're dealing with. So with integers, usually there are four memory locations. But again, for simplicity, we're just going to treat them as one memory location. Now, what I want you to think about, imagine the address of this memory location was 7. So what are we going to have here? We're going to have the value 1 stored here, 2 stored here, 3, and 4. And five. Most importantly, you should know that x by itself equals seven. And seven is an address of a memory location. So what is that telling me? Actually, x, even though I define it as an integer of an array, in reality, x is a pointer. Okay, now you may ask me, okay, so x is a pointer. Um, how would that work? Let's go ahead and show you how does that work. If I go back to my program, and instead of, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a space here. And in this area here, I'm going to type ARR plus 1. I'm doing this for a reason, by the way, but let's just have a look at what we're going to get. So look at this. This is the memory location, AAR, and this is AAR again. But look at the difference between them. 
four, and one, four, and one. Do you see the difference between them? Okay, now you may ask, well, you just added one here. Why is it adding four? Well, just like I said here, integers usually, every single integer by itself, I'm going to take this one by itself here, just the one. In reality, a simple integer needs four memory locations to store that one. So let's say the one's going to be stored in all of these four memory locations. Now, this memory location well, seven, so when you add one to it, it's not going to jump into the one next to it, which is this one, the one in the middle. No, it's going to jump to the next integer in that array, which basically where I stored two. So that's why you see here that, and let's come back here. When I added one, in reality, it was added as four. Well, let me show you something a little bit weirder. If I come here and type double, now can you imagine what's going to happen? What is the size? How many memory locations do I need for a double? I think it's eight. Let me just, I think, yeah, it should be eight. And look at this. This is four, and this is C. Now, if you don't want to see, let me just explain what is C. We got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is A, B, C. That's eight. C in hexadecimal is, is, uh, is uh, 11, uh, 10, 11, 12. So you can see here, I added 8, because if you add 4 to 8, you'll get 12, and 12 is C. So you see here, that's what's going on here. Okay, now let's go back to um, those arrays. Now look what I'm going to do. We said here, if you want to see the address, you just type the, the pointer. But what if I want to see the value? Well, if I want to see the value, put an asterisk here. And again, put an asterisk here. Now, whatever is going to print it for the next value is not going to, well, actually, it's going to be correct. Let me just put different values here. I'm going to put, let's say, 5. I'm going to put here 13, 24, and 50. Okay. So, let's see here. This is me showing, again, if I took those asterisk, this is supposed to show me the address but we said if you don't want to see you want to see the value itself you put an asterisk here so i'm going to put an asterisk here now here's what's going to happen here in this area for this one it's going to show me the value for the address aar which is going to be one but when you're going to get to this point it's going to do the same thing the ad the value of of the first address which is one it's going to add one to it so it's going to get two let me just run it so you'll see what do i mean by that and here one two. Well, the second value is five here. So if you wanted this, if you wanted this to have this the effect that we expected, put it this way. And you get one and five. So the whole point, what I'm trying to say here is arrays are pointers. That's the whole point. And you can treat an array as an array, just like we did before. say zero here or you can treat it as a pointers either way it will work but again yet this is what we call static array okay so what is a dynamic array then well let me just run this so you'll see that it'll get the exact same results and here we go now so that's a static array. What is a dynamic array? Well, let's go back to this example here. With the static arrays, you need to specify the size of the array while you're typing the program. So you cannot leave the size of the address of the array, sorry, to be specified later for by the user. It has to be specified while you're writing the code. Now, why is that bad? Because sometimes, not sometimes, most of the times, you are not sure about the size of the data. For example, I'm going to create a pro application for a classroom. Well, sometimes in my classrooms I have two students, sometimes I have 45. So the question is, what is the size if I want to create an array for the students? Again, remember, this is going to be while I'm writing the code and I'm not sure about the enrollment. Well, to be safe, let's just put 50. But 
at the when I'm going to start using my program, I just realized I only have two students. You know what I just did, did here? I wasted 48 memory, not memory location, actually it depends on the variable, but reserved area or reserved space inside my inside my array. Now, what if I was like, you know what, I'll just, I don't want to waste memory, let's just go ahead with 5. Okay, I'll go with 5. What if I have 45 then? Well, that's not enough anymore. So I have another type of problem. So you see here, static arrays only works if you know the size while you're typing your program, you're writing your code. But if the size is something that could change, then static arrays is not your, uh, your friend here. So what do you do in this case? Well, the idea is very simple. Create a dynamic array. Dynamic array could be specified by the user when the user is using the program. For example, I'm going to come here and going to say integer, and I'll type size. We'll just keep it as a variable. C out, enter the size of the array. And then I'll put C in, size, semicolon. Oops, I forgot something here. Uh, assertion operation. Um, so here's the big deal. This is what we need to do. But this is how we create what, what I call a dynamic array, or what, what is called dynamic array. First of all, you have to specify the size, just like we did before. And then after that, you type asterisk, and I will call it uh, D A. Let's go with D, D array. And then you, you type equal. Now this is a new, same data type. And then in this area, you put square bracket, and then you type your variable. So this is, here I basically created a dynamic array, and the size of the array is a variable. I declared it here, and I asked the user to enter it, so basically nobody knows until the user decides what will be the size of that array. And then after that, and this is extremely important, I recommend to do it. Like before you keep going with your code, go to the part where you know that you're going to have to delete this array and delete it, just like you deleted the dynamic variable. The only difference here is they have to put a square bracket and then the array. That's all I call it. So this is it. This part here, I created a variable called size. Um, I asked the user to enter the value, and the user entered the value, and I used the value to define an array. And then after that, don't forget that you have to delete it. Now, this part here is not necessarily uh, done every time. You might just come here and type integer s equal, let's say, 200, and then you come here and put s. That's still acceptable. You can always uh, have it as a variable, but just remember, when we try to do that a long time ago with the a static array, you're not allowed to do that. Whenever you come, for example, here to this five, if you want to use a variable, it has to be a constant variable. You cannot just put a variable here. Now I can just come here and say for integer i equals zero, i is less than size, and then i plus plus. I'm just going to assign values to this D array, and I'm just going to use I here, and I'll set it to I multiplied by 5 or 3. And then after that, let's just try to show it on the screen. I'm just trying to show you that uh, how do I populate this array, and this area I'll just see out. Uh, the this array and let's put a uh, space. My colon, take this away, and of course it's C out, not V out. And here we go. So let's just run this. Okay, here we go. So enter the size of the array, I go with 10. Oh, did I miss something here? Uh, the get character. Okay, I see. Let's go ahead. C in dot egg 
ignore because we have an input operation well, at one time we need to actually flush the buffer so okay so 10 again and here we go 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 27 um, let's just add a C out at the end here. C out and line. This time I'm going to put, let's say, 10. Oh, I just did 10. Let's try something else. I'll put 32. And here we go. Uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Instead of multiplying it by 3, let's just enter a factor. C out. Enter a factor. And then, come here and type integer factor. C and factor. And then instead of three, we'll just use factor. And you know what? I think I'm going to change something here. Let's go double. Double. And let's make this one double as well. And here we'll just go with a double. Uh, factor. Okay, so I will go with 10 again. The factor I'm going to go 1.82. And here we go, those are my numbers. <clears throat> so basically, this is. I have noticed that I say basically a lot, and I'm sorry if that's bothering you. Well, if, that, if that's bothering you, um, here we go. This in this video we talked about pointers in general. And then we talked about how do we use pointers, and then after that we talked about double uh, dynamic arrays, and then we talked about static arrays and how static arrays are related to pointers, and we saw that double. Uh, Dynamic arrays are really, really helpful if you really don't know the size of your array. And if you think about a dynamic array, it's basically just a pointer, which basically, again, mean, again, basically, uh, which means that a static array also, we learned that it's uh, just a pointer. Um, one thing that I know that most of you guys are going to forget, forget is this delete command or this uh, statement here. Don't forget that this is basically what I'm going to be looking at whenever I look at your work. Um, this will be the end of this video, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Have a good day.